cases will be presented by Professor Dr. Ala Aghis and will be discussed by the all panelists and the speakers and the guests. It's a great honor for me to um, to the all the staff of the I Lounge to introduce our guest speakers today to the I Lounge. The first one is the well-known Professor Mazin Sinjab. He is professor at Damascus University in Syria, visiting professor at Al Hassan II University in Casablanca, consultant ophthalmologist, faecal refractive surgeon at Medicare Eye Center and Hospital in Dubai, United Emirates, Arab Emirates. He is famous for his own Sinjab Academy with more than 8,000 subscribers in the YouTube. It is a very valuable and informative channel, teaching channel for ophthalmology. He is well known for his multiple publications about Bentacam that enriched all of us about Bentacam, how to read, how to interpret, how, and how to manage all refractive surgeries by its all different types. He recently published a new book about, a recent book about step to step, a step to step by step management of refractive surgery. Congratulations for the new book, Dr. Mez. The second guest Thank speaker here is my very close friend and uh, the well-known Professor Muhammad Katib. He is a fellow, was a fellowship at uh, UT Southwestern Medical Center at Dallas, Texas. He's a sensitive professor of ophthalmology at Alexandria University. He is highly informing and learning, and he is very cooperative for everyone has been to camp to learn. Everyone, everywhere, Dr. Cathy, this been to camp, do or not to do, every time, everywhere, in every conference. Welcome, Dr. Muhammad Katib. Welcome, Dr. Mazin Sinjab. Shukran, and now introduce Professor Ala Ghis to start the meeting. I'll stop Thank here. you very much. You are more than welcome. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that was very nice from you, Dr. Hatem. Uh, we will try to speak in English and in Arabic. I don't think it's all English. أعتقد هيبقى أسهل للمتلقين تالي أعتقد معظم ال ولا تحبوا نتكلم إنجليزي بس يعني والبي يعني إيه خليها فرانكو أراب أعتقد حتى بقى كويسة بعد إذن الدكتور حاتم باشا يا لا رئيس I I I prefer دكتور مازن we may find some audience away from the Arab region. That's why I prefer English to be the, the, the most of the speaks. speech today is English. As you okay. like it, Ra'ala. Okay. <laughs> let's start. Uh, uh, let's start. Um, first, Pentacam has become an important tool in decision making in refractive surgery and keratoconus management. الحقيقه بنتكام لا غنى عنه دلوقتي كل واحد بيعمل ريفراكتيف سيرجري او بيمانج كراتوكونس لازم يكون فاهم البنتكام كويس. سكند بنتكام مابس ماي بي فيري ديسايسيف اند كلير كات ان سام بيشنتس ويز نو داوت ان ذا ديسيجن بتبقى سهله جدا ما فيش اي مشكله والبيانات واضحه وما فيش اي غموض. But sometimes Pentacam maps may be elusive and the values deposited are confusing. Uh, these are the situations where the surgeon search for a second or even a third opinion from a more experienced colleague to help him or her reach a decision. كتير قوي حتى الحقيقة أنا دلوقتي بالرغم من يعني 20 سنة بشتغل لكن الحقيقه برضه ساعات ببقى محتار ببقى عايز راي تاني راي تاني معايا. Uh, and we are here today to clarify some of these confusing points. Uh, النهارده هنعرض بعض الحالات اللي فيها confusion شويه شويه مش كتير. Uh, وهنتناقش معاها as panelist we will discuss these cases and uh, try to reach a decision in, in these cases. Uh, so now, what are the situations where the refractive surgeon become confused? Uh, for example, thin corneas, abnormal anterior curvature, for example, inferior steepening or asymmetric bow tie with the uh, skewing of radial axes or bizarre shapes of the anterior corneal curvature. 
third, very steep or very flat corneas, for example, more than 48 diopters or less than 39 diopters. These cases are really um, bizarre. Suspicious anterior or posterior elevations. برضو حنتكلم النهاردة على الكات of values إيه ال values اللي نعتبرها suspicions وإيه ال values اللي ما تعتبرش abnormal balen ambrosio enhanced ectasia profile برضو ما في حاجات في ال profile ده بتحيرنا وهو very important وفي نفس في نفس الوقت ساعات بيبقى confusing ومش عارفين بالضبط نخده is it really sensitive يعني ولا نتجهله طبعا في محاضرات كتير قوي اتقالت وعلى النت في محاضرات كتير وسيشنز احنا النهارده يعني عايزين نبقى سيمبل وي نيد تو بي سيمبل مع الاودينس او الاودينس ومعانا طبعا الدكتور مازن والدكتور الكاتب وهم يعني بالنسبه للدكتور مازن هو اوثورتي من زمان في البنتكام و آراءه طبعا بيؤخذ بها في كثير من الدول العربيه بالذات فالدكتور الكاتب ما شاء الله يعني بقاله برضو من يوم ما رجع من تكساس 15 سنه وهو بي يعني فاهم قوي البنتا كام وبنلجا له انا شخصيا ساعات بلجا له لما بكون ريدي كونفيوز ودكتور حاتم برضو ف النهارده هنبتدي نتكلم عن الحالات واحد ولا الثاني بس في الاول let me ask Dr. Mazen if you have such a pentacam a full refractive display and you are uh, uh, and you are uh, you need to know exactly uh, what are the numbers or what are the points you look at in this map and also in the second map the enhanced uh, Bellin Ambrosi profile Welcome, Dr. Mazen. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ana bashkurkum jazeel shukr. Bashkur Dr. Hatim Ammar wa al-prof ala ghith li tanzim hal liqa al-ilmi. Ana jiddan sa'id wa sharrafni inu koon ma'a hadratkum wa khasatan ma'a al-ustaz Dr. Muhammad al-Katib wa aydan Dr. Ahmed al-Ghnim. شرف لي ان اكون بين العمالقه ف هقول لكم باللهجه المصريه بالراحه علي شويه شويه. <تصفيق> ف حقيقه ليت مي ستارت تو سي ذات اي وود ادفايز او ليت مي سي ذات اي هاف تو ريكومنديشنز فور ايفري بادي هو وود لايك تو ريد ذا بنتاكام. ذا فيرست ادفايز از Uh, that try to uh, follow a systematic pathway or a systematic method that you uses every time you read the Pentacam. So you cannot miss any information and you can uh, make the most of every information that you get by, uh, by the uh, Pentacam, especially that the Pentacam nowadays is very important as a topographer, I'm talking about that as a tomographer, is very important not only for LASIK or laser, it's even important for lens-based refractive surgery such as fake IULs or clear lens extraction with and without premium lenses and even in cataract surgery. So try to follow a, a systematic method. This is the first thing. The other thing is uh, try to make Uh, the uh, settings as standard. You have to follow the standardized um, method for the settings so that you will not go into false findings because as I'll show you in my presentation, uh, if we change some numbers, then there will be a huge difference and maybe the decision will differ from not to do into to do or vice versa. Now, the third thing that I would like to say is, if you train your team uh, how to read with you, then you have to uh, let them read as well what you are going to, to read. Why is this? Because sometimes when you are very busy, when you are very tired, 
when you are confused for something, maybe you have many things to do, you may miss some points. As an example, yesterday, one of my, uh, uh, let's say, students asked me about a case of Pentacan, and uh, there was like um, something suspicious on the uh, elevation map. And then I decided, okay, you can go for PRK, but I did not pay attention that the uh, thickness of the cornea was below 450. So my student said, oh, how can we do PRK for a patient who is below 450, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, 450. Uh, immediately I, I said, I'm sorry, I did not recognize that because I, I really was very, very busy. So uh, don't think, uh, everybody of us uh, should not think that, okay, I am the best so I can make the decision. Try to make uh, the decision with your colleague, even if he is your student. So these are the three recommendations actually before we start. So regarding this Pentacam, uh, regarding this Pentacam, uh, actually I look at every parameter on the left side and I look at every map on the right side. Uh, I think this is the four composite refractive map. In addition, if we have complementary maps, it would be much better. For example, the uh, thickness profiles, the relative pachymetry map, and Bell and Ambrosio as well. Um, sometimes holiday report is very helpful, or sometimes it is very essential, as we will see later. Uh, in addition to the uh, total corneal refractive power in order to see the real astigmatism, especially when you are going to do, for example, toric IOL, uh, implantation or premium IOL uh, implantation. So, um, do you like me to start, uh, Dr. Ala, Professor Ala? Do you like me to start my short yes. introduction? Okay, um, thank you very much. I would like, to, yes, all of us would like you to know how Dr. Mazen uh, look at uh, at the Pentacam map. This map. How do you? How? What? Where do you look? Okay, what great. do you thank you very much see? i'm going to share uh, i have to stop okay. stop share dr ala yes uh, you can see my screen now yes yeah. okay great uh, first of all let me uh, talk about a little bit about the settings that we should use before we uh, read the pentacam first of all it's better to see the magnified display, the nine millimeter, as you see in, in, in the red ellipses, the nine millimeter. Why the nine millimeter is very important? Because you um, discard the very far periphery of the pentacam, which is usually uh, not real. Uh, usually it is extrapolated. So you don't need to look at it. Uh, this is one point. The other point is when there, there are some extrapolated data at the, at the periphery of the cornea, um, which are like uh, black dots. It means that there are missing data and the computer tries to, find, to build uh, a virtual data based on the surroundings. So if you uh, see the nine millimeter and you see these extrapolated data disappeared, then you can accept uh, the display and you can go on. Otherwise, for example, this is the uh, left side. You see a huge extrapolated uh, areas at the periphery of the cornea, especially in the superior part. And when we uh, use the nine millimeter, still there are extrapolated data. So we cannot accept this display and the patient should repeat this capture. This is why nine millimeter is very important. The other thing is for the curvature map, it's better to use the, uh, <clears throat> sorry, the absolute uh, uh, color map absolute, uh, which is one diopter uh, steps. And for the uh, elevation maps, the, fine, the five micron color scale. And for the uh, pachymetry map, the 10 micron color scale. Uh, now, uh, we have to know that these color scales do not change the numbers. So if you click on any other uh, color scale, the numbers will not change, but the colors will change. But why these colors? because they are the standard colors, um, international colors, in addition, or standard uh, color scales, let's say. In addition, uh, if you click uh, something else, you, you may find like uh, uh, 
exaggeration of the findings. You may find like hot spots or hot colors. So you may feel that this cornea is very steep while it's not. Um, this is an example. Look at the left side, you will find that it is um, 0 0.25 steps, while look on the right side, it is one diopter step. So it is same numbers, same uh, uh, map, but the color scale is different. So if you use the 0 0.25, you may feel, no, this is um, something um, very dangerous, uh, and uh, you may exclude the patient. Um, okay. For the elevation maps, it's very important to, um, to be sure that the best fit sphere, if it is in the best fit sphere or in the best fit toric ellipsoid, that it is the eight millimeter diameter, as you see, for the anterior and for the posterior. Why the eight millimeter is important? Because this is the standard diameter on which Bellin and Ambrosio, they built their normative data. We will see later the normative data, uh, which is like a table for um, the anterior and posterior elevations, the cutoff values beyond which we, we cannot accept uh, the patient. So uh, this depends on the eight millimeter. If we go out of eight millimeter, for example, nine or seven, then the numbers will change and you, we cannot depend on that table. We need another normative data, but actually, um, uh, that's not available till now. The only available data are for the eight millimeter. Um, this is an example. On the left, you will see that I chose for the best fit sphere, eight millimeter diameter. And for the left, I chose five millimeter diameter. This is the same corneal surface. It is back surface, the same corneal surface, but look at the huge difference in numbers. On the right, you can see plus 15, plus 17, on the left, plus 77, plus uh, 85. So this is a huge difference. Um, so this is the um, four maps as uh, Professor Ala uh, Ghith, um, sorry, Professor Ala uh, showed me the, uh, the, the pentacam in order to say which numbers I should be, uh, see. Um, yeah, <coughs> but before that, this is an example um, look at this map. This is the elevation map with a nine millimeter. Okay. If you look at the left side, uh, right side, you will find in the above, you will find elevation front. And in the, at the bottom, you will find the elevation back nine millimeter. Now look at the thinnest location. Can you see the, the mouse? It's my mouse moving on the yeah. screen. Yes. Okay. yes. Now this is the thinnest location here. It is plus six on the anterior and it is plus 27 on the posterior, all right? But this is nine millimeter best fit sphere. Okay, now let's see what will happen if I switch to the eight millimeter. This is the eight millimeter. Now it was plus 27 for the posterior. Now it is plus 18. So a huge difference. Um, this is an example on the left, the manual eight millimeter on the right, the nine millimeter, the same patient, the same corneal surface, plus 18 at the thinnest location, plus 27 at the thinnest location. Now, sometimes in some um, centers, maybe they, um, just a second, let me switch off the WhatsApp because it's annoying. Okay. Okay, now in some centers, they may use the auto. Uh, auto means that the uh, computer will choose the diameter that uh, finds it uh, better for the uh, surface based on the radius of curvature and other factors, but actually this is not correct. We have to uh, click on manual and we have to adjust it at eight millimeter. Uh, on the right, you will find manual uh, seven millimeter and you will find that the uh, thinnest location is plus nine, which is not correct. Now, after I get the pentacam from the technician, of course, there are steps that the technician should do before he sends the pentacam to the doctor. The validation step starts with the technician, but I'm not going to talk about that now. I'm going to talk about the um, steps that the doctor should see 
in order to validate the capture or maybe to reject the capture. The first, first of all, we have to look at the quality uh, specification. It should be, of course, white, okay. If it is not white, okay, then we have to repeat it. Now, sometimes even with white, okay, such in this case, the patient was looking downward. So it was misalignment during taking the capture. And this case was about to, to be diagnosed as keratoconus. As you see on the posterior elevation map, there is a huge cone while it was misalignment only. In spite of this, the Pentacam could not uh, recognize that the patient was not looking centrally. So it gave quality specification, okay. So, which means that if it is okay, does not mean that it is okay. Now, um, the second step is to compare pupil coordinates between the, the two eyes, X right with X left and Y right with Y left. We have to follow um, a formula, let's say, x plus x should be less than 200 microns, y minus y should be less than 200 microns. So x plus x and y minus y. And we use the algebraic as well, the algebraic sign, of course, we have to consider it. Now, this is an example. We look at the pupil center co coordinates. We uh, calculate x plus x and y minus y. In this case, we find that X plus X is uh, less than 200 microns, but Y minus Y is more than 200 microns. It is 260 microns, all right? So there is misalignment in the vertical uh, direction. Uh, this is another example. X plus X is more than 200 microns. It is 290 microns, and Y minus Y is um, uh, 760 microns. So there is misalignment in both directions. This is another case of large angle kappa. Why we should do this? Because we have to differentiate this misalignment from large angle kappa. If it is large angle kappa, we will find large numbers. As you see, X in the right eye is minus 0 0.68, and in the left eye, it is plus 0 0.68. So uh, there is large angle kappa, but there is no misalignment because X plus X is less than 200 microns and Y minus Y is less than 200 microns. So this is the second uh, step. The third step here, this is uh, wrong, it should be three. The third step is astigmatic disparity. We have to compare the manifest astigmatism or the subject astigmatism of the patient with the topographical astigmatism. Now, there must be a matching. Um, let's say uh, the, um, the magnitude should not differ more than one diopters and the axis should not uh, differ more than 10 degrees. Now, the best uh, display to, to take the real astigmatism of the cornea is the uh, total corneal refractive power because it takes into consideration both corneal surfaces. Uh, so this is the display at the three millimeter ring apex, we have to click on ring apex because this is the standard, international standard. So three millimeter, and then we compare it with the manifest astigmatism. If there is um, a disparity, then it means that we have to repeat or at least exclude factors of false findings. For example, dry eye, misalignment, contact lenses, scars in the cornea, um, uh, opacity in the lens, uh, a lot of things. Now, if we don't have this display, and this is what we usually face while we are in the clinic, we, usually we don't have all of these uh, maps, then very simply, I have to, um, not the pupil center, sorry. Uh, it should be, I have to look at the astigmatism, okay? The astigmatism on the anterior surface and the astigmatism of the posterior surface. Very simply, I deduct the posterior from the, uh, so I subtract the posterior from the, anterior and uh, I use the flat axis of the anterior and then compare it with the uh, manifest astigmatism. Now, after I validate the capture, I um, uh, uh, look at these points. I look at the KM, not KMAX. No longer I'm using the, the KMAX because the KM has the normative data, not the KMAX. And I look at the uh, thinnest location. I look at the pachymet sorry, the sagittal curvature map front. I look, that, uh, look at the two opposing points on the um, 
almost four millimeter zone between three and five. Okay, the second circle of uh, numbers on the steep axis. I look at the very inner most of the uh, segment, the red segment, if there is any angulation for the skewed radial axis. I look at the thinnest location in the best fit sphere using the eight millimeter, as I told you before. So the thinnest location, what's the corresponding number? For, for example, this is plus two and this is plus 16. And I use this table, which was put by Bellin and Ambrosio using the three standard deviations for the anterior and posterior. This is uh, the first line is for uh, myopic people and emetropic people, 818. And the second line is for hypermetropic people and mixed astigmatism, it is 728. Then I look at the pattern of the pachymetry map. I don't look at the numbers because uh, the numbers are very misleading in the pachymetry map. I look at the pattern, whether it is concentric or, for example, dome shape, a droplet, bell shape, um, a globus shape, and, and uh, others. Complementary maps consist of the, uh, the uh, thickness profiles, consist of the relative pachymetry map. The relative pachymetry map is very useful in order to uh, to check whether the patient had previous corneal surgery, especially if it was um, uh, laser refractive surgery, for example, PRK or LASIK or SMILE even. It's very important for such uh, things. And you know, the Bell and Ambrosio um, uh, display, it gives an idea whether there is something suspicious or abnormal, but it has false negatives and it has false positives. The main false positive of it false positive of it is large angle kappa. In large angle kappa, you will find it gives abnormal while it is normal. Um, complementary map, as I told you, this is the total refractive power map, which is very important for the toric IOL calculation, for the premium IOL calculation, for validating the map, uh, as I told you, um, a lot of uh, applications. Uh, in addition, the holiday report. The holiday report is very important, actually, not only for white to white, because usually white to white is better uh, measured by the optical uh, devices, for example, the IOL Master or Lenstar, but it is very important for cord mu, because as you know, Pentacam does not use the Placido, so it does not measure angle kappa directly. Holiday report uh, measures cord mu, which is uh, quite similar to the angle kappa. But if we don't have uh, the uh, holiday report, then we can, uh, we can depend on the uh, pupil coordinates. We divide them by two and consider that as angle kappa. So as a summary, if uh, the audience would like to take a screenshot of this, uh, um, the PS3, I called it the PS3, which is the practical subjective scoring system. Uh, with uh, all details, all exceptions, when to, uh, to consider this abnormality, when not to consider it. So I usually follow this table. In addition, I do the inter-eye uh, uh, asymmetry scoring, as you see here, because this is a part of this PS3. Now, what is the inter-eye asymmetry? It depends on uh, comparing five points between both eyes and giving each point plus one, then calculating how many uh, are positive, then we go and apply it uh, on that one, on this uh, table. After that, if I have no moderate risk factors and no high risk factors, I am free to go for PRK, SMILE, or LASIK. But if there is only one moderate risk factor, I immediately exclude LASIK. Other, uh, if I have one moderate, uh, sorry, uh, two moderate risk factors in one eye or one high risk factor, then I don't do anything of those. Uh, last, I would like to emphasize on um, uh, use uh, on reading the wavefront as well, because wavefront is very important in decision making for laser based, for lens based, and for cataract. Not only to know. And the quality of vision or uh, to predict the prognosis, but also to choose the IOL that should be uh, implanted. Because if the RMS is high and we implant premium IOL, then there will be a, dis a disaster. The patient will suffer from dysphotopsia. Of course, it should be six millimeter 
the standard. We click on the pyramid. We have to, to check the whole cornea, way front um, for the cornea, not only surfaces front or back. Then I click N3, which consists of the comma and the trefoil. In addition, only the uh, spherical aberration in N4. So in total, we have five, five uh, aberrations that are important. We click on them, and then we look at the RMS here, uh, and we look at the spherical aberration coefficient in microns as well. I'm not going to talk about uh, what if this, what if that, because this is a huge uh, talk, actually. So in general, as I told you, we look at these five uh, uh, um, high order aberrations, and we look at the RMS, and I would like to um, announce my the third edition of the step-by-step -step reading pentacam because because actually uh, it is up to date it talks about the full workup for laser-based refractive surgery for lens-based refractive surgery and for cataract surgery as well in a very simple direct to, to the point um, uh, method and um, uh, chapter eight is devoted to to study in detail uh, for clinical cases and thank you very much آه شكرا دكتور مازن حضرتك اديتنا يعني آه تقرير شامل عن آه نبص على ايه بالظبط في البنتاكام طيب خليني ادخل تاني على ال بس انا كنت عايز اقول لل للاي تي ان في ناس كتير عايزه تدخل وفي عندهم مشكله في الدخول فقول لنا قولوا لهم بس يدخلوا ازاي آه هعمل شيرنج لل هنا يعني أنا كنت يعني نلخص كلام حضرتك إنك يعني بتبص طبعا على الكواليتي اللي هي أوكي هنا وبتبص على ال يعني طبعا في ديسبلايز مش موجودة من حضرتك عرضتها بس يعني عموما بتبص على البيوبل سنتر مكانه فين وبتبص على فينس لوكيشن فينس لوكيشن قد إيه هي ومكانها فين وبتبص على الاليفيشن بوستيريور انتيريور اليفيشن قصاد الفينس لوكيشن هنا الفينس لوكيشن في النص بالظبط وقدامها في الباك اليفيشن في بلس 1 وبلس 3 في الفرونت اليفيشن بتبص كمان حضرتك على الكي ام الكي ام فوق الكي ام دي وبتبص كمان على الكي ماكس ولا مش مهم الكي ماكس في الكراتوكونس يعني؟ انا كنت انا كنت كنت يعني اشوفها و I, I, يعني اي كونسيدر ات يوجوالي بات ات هاز نو نورماتيف داتا يعني اي كودنت فايند ذات ذير از ا نورماتيف داتا ذات سيز اف ات از بيلو ذيس نورمال ابوف اب نورمال بات فور ذا كي ام ذير ار نورماتيف داتا فور ليتس سي ذا بلاسيدو بيزد توبوجرافرز Uh, the cutoff point is uh, 47.2 according to uh, Rabinovich. Okay, so if it is above 47.2, it is considered abnormal. Now, based on Holiday, uh, Jack Holiday, uh, in Scheinflug based, the cutoff point is 48. So if it is for the Pentacam, it is above 48, we consider it as, um, let's say, suspicious. And um, Personally, I consider it suspicious if it is between 48 and 50. And if it is above 50, I consider it absolutely abnormal. We are speaking about KM, K2 KM. or uh, KM? KM, 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 only uh, KM. The mean, mean, K. The mean K. Uh, yeah. But there is no classification of Kratokonis according to K-Max. Yeah, I didn't see it. I didn't uh, read anything about that. Uh -huh. uh, K-Max is not considered... Uh, in spite that it is the most important part in the cornea, the, the most uh, prominent, steepest part of the cornea. Isn't yeah, that exactly. true? Or, but yeah. they don't it put it into the consideration. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because um, it is prone to uh, artifacts. It is prone to artifacts. Uh, because of Sometimes, its preferred location. Yeah, uh, sometimes it's very, very far periphery. Sometimes it's affected by the dry eye. Um, 
uh, a lot of things. So this is why, in addition, uh, for the progression criteria of keratoconus, um, it is just considered as a point, but it does mm -hmm. not uh, uh, show what happens as a zone. This is why in okay. Berlin, uh, ABCD staging, uh, he doesn't depend on KMAX. He, does, he depends on zone rather on the, uh, than points. Yes, the three millimeter. Okay. So, and in the Berlin and Ambrosio enhanced profile, you, um, you, I didn't get exactly uh, what are the important points you look at. You look at the P, a PTI, uh, its location, its uh, shape. Um, yeah. wh what you look at, uh, Yanni? Okay. We, we need a clear message to the audience. Okay. Um, Barakallah Fika, thank you very much for reminding me. I know I, mm -hmm. I forgot to, to, to uh, no, no mention problem. that. Actually, yeah. uh, actually, for the... Um, just a second. Some applications are... Okay. Now, uh, regarding um, this uh, profile, the spatial profile and the uh, percentage thickness profile, we look at the shape actually, and we don't look at where it is. Sometimes it starts at the level of 500 microns, sometimes um, below or above. But we look at the shape and how homogeneous and how gradual it goes uh, within the dotted lines, because the dotted, li dotted lines are for normative data, for normal people. So if it follows the passage gradually, then it is considered normal. Now, if it goes down quickly before the six millimeter, mm -hmm. then it is quick slope, which is usually encountered in ectotic corneal diseases. Yes. Now, whenever it goes flat, this is very important. Whenever it goes flat, it means that mm -hmm. the cornea is abnormally thick. It is disease thick. Maybe it is yeah. Fox, maybe yeah. it is Guttata. Mm -hmm. And th this is why it's important if we have it before cataract surgery, if, we, if it is flat, then it may tell us that you have to check the endothelium and uh, because the patient may have a Fox or, or uh, good data. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, okay, we will, we will look at the, at the cases and then discuss this طب, in more يعني, detail. دكتور مازن معايا متهيألي الدكتور كاتب تقريب مع ده ان اهم حاجه التو كيرز دول العلامات الاخضر والالوان دي جاست كلوز بس يعني تاخد عينك انما هي انا يهمني الكيرف لو الكيرف مظبوط حلو اب تو 6 ملم نوت مور ما يهمنيش بعد 6 ملم بيحصل ايه الكلام ده صح ولا 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 الكلام ده انا فاهمه مش مظبوط دكتور محمد اه ارد انا مش محمد انت معانا انا بقول لك لحضرتك ولدكتور مازن الاثنين طب هو انا بس بعد اذن حضراتكم طبعا دكتور مازن الحقيقه بيتكلم كلام رائع الحقيقه على السكيماتيك ابروتش للماب بتاعت البنتاكام اند اي ريلي ابريشيت هيز سمبليفايد وايز اوف اوف ديسكاسينج ذا ايشوز يعني بس انا اف وي ريتيرن باك معلش للماب اللي قبلها يا دكتور علاء هي في نقطتين انا ببص عليهم زياده على النقط اللي الدكتور مازن طبعا يعني. أول نقطة وأنا بالنسبة لي بتبقى نقطة مهمة جدا في الديسيجن ميكنج هي الإيج. ديت أوف بيرث. الإيج الحقيقة بيفرق معايا كتير جدا في الديسيجن ميكنج ويمكن إحنا بنصر دايما إنه ال... ولازم كل واحد فينا يقول التكنيشن بتاعه يدخل الإيج بجد، إيج مظبوط يعني، مش أي أرقام كده وخلاص أو أي أبروكسيمت نمبرز. ليه؟ لأن الإيج الحقيقة هو بيفهمنا حاجات كتيرة قوي بيقدر يخليني اكلاسيفاي الاكتاتيك كورنيال كونديشنز اللي انا بشوفها على البنتا كام بيفرق معايا في الديسيجن ميكنج اذا كنت هكروس لينك دلوقتي هبوستون كروس لينكينج اذا كنت هعمل ريفراكتيف سيرجري او هاجلها فالايدج از ان امبورتنت بارامتر الحقيقه في رايي انا الشخصي okay. uh, البارامتر الثاني اللي انا الحقيقه عيني بتروح له كمان بالاضافه طبعا الكلام ده بلس البارامترز الاساسيه اللي قالها الدكتور مازن عشان بس ما حدش يفهم انه دي انا ما بشوفها لا لا يعني الدكتور مازن اللي قاله بلس ده النقطه آه المهمه قوي هي اشار اليها الدكتور مازن هي البيوبل سنتر 
الاكس والواي اكسيس بتوعها دي بتبقى مهمه اند اتس ريليشن تو ذا باكيمتري ايكس لان من النقطتين دول انا بقدر ان انا احدد ابروكسيمتلي اذا كان البيشنت ده عنده بوزيتيف انجل كابا او لا ودي زي ما حضراتكم عارفين طبعا انها بتفرق كتير جدا في الريفراكتيف ليزر كوركشن في الناس اللي هم الهايبرميتروبس بالذات عشان تو افويد البوست اوبريتيف ديسنتر ابليشنز المشكله الازليه اللي اكسكيوز مي دكتور محمد وان مينيت سم سم اوف ذا اودينس ار سينج بليز تراي تو سبيك ان انجلش ذي دونت انديرستاند عربيك ذي دونت نوت فروم يو فروم اول اوف اس ذي دونت انديرستاند عربيك سم سم كومنتس ار بريزنت باي اي ابولوجايز ريتيرن باك تو تو اور انجلش سو ذا ذا سكند ذا سكند ذا سكند بوينت ذات ام لوكينج فور از ذا Uh, pupil center, the X and Y axis of the pupil center, and its relation to the uh, X and Y axis of the pachymetry apex. I mean the position of the pupil center in relation to the pachymetry apex. And these two points determine for me an important clue, which is the angle kappa. Uh, angle kappa, as we all know, is a, a crucial uh, factor uh, that decides the success of the treatment of uh, hypropic uh, LASIK in general. And uh, if we don't put it in consideration, we may face by uh, disinterred ablations uh, and uh, unhappy patients <coughs> that were not uh, diagnosed in the past. Yeah. So and these in two points. Uh, multifocal uh, IOLs. And also. in the multifocal IOLs, taban, <coughs> of course. Uh, fa I, uh, any any treatment that needs to uh, presbyopic or hypropic or uh, multifocal approaches. Uh, we have to put the angle kappa in consideration. And these are the two points that I can add over what uh, mentioned by uh, Professor uh, Dr. Mazin. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ketter. Uh, I have a number of cases, so uh, let's go on and dive into them. Uh, case one uh, is a 46 years old male uh, working as a fish merchant. Uh, the manifest refraction of the right eye is uh, mainly he is an astigmatic patient with three diopters of astigmatism in each eye, uh, which is um, against the rule astigmatism. And his best corrected visual acuity is one in each eye. Uh, this is his uh, right eye for refractive, for map refractive display map. And uh, as you can see, uh, should I comment on it or I ask uh, uh, Dr. Madsen or Dr. Okay. Um, as you can see in the anterior uh, sagittal curvature map, the patient has uh, bow tie, a transverse bow tie, meaning uh, against the rule astigmatism. And uh, the K2 is 46.2. And uh, the astigmatic error is 2.2 and not 3 as the refractive one. Uh, the thinnest location is 4, uh, the amount is 465. And its location is uh, a little bit, uh, the X and Y are um, not exactly the, at this, the, the center of the, a, of the corneal apex. It is this, the, the, the thinnest location is displayed, uh, this displaced, as you can see, uh, down and temporal. Uh, the, back, the back elevation and the front elevation, you can see that the back elevation is, it's uh, what's this, 19 or uh, 10? I think it's uh, 19. Plus 19. 19. Yes, one night. And okay. If we shift to the Bellin Ambrosio profile, uh, you can see that the the thickness from uh, until the six uh, millimeter zone is okay. Uh, it's the, it's a normal progression, and the pro percentage thickness increase also is. Uh, uh, regular, but it is close to the lower percentile. And the indices here are uh, yellow. So, and uh, this, the, the maps on the left, they are green. Uh, the same thing is there with the left eye, but you can, 
see some screwing at the periphery of the at transverse bow tie. The thickness is 457, the thinnest location. It is even thinner. Uh, and uh, the back elevation, it is plus 14. Um, the Belen Ambrosio is the reddish, a little bit red. So uh, this is my uh, first look at these maps. Uh, our experts, do you look at more, uh, more uh, details about these patients? Uh, what do you, do you have a closer look or a, a more uh, analytical uh, way to look at these patients, at this map? Uh, if you don't mind, can I... Can I say Go something on. for this? Okay. Go on. Um, for the first time, uh, if you have a bird view look for these maps, the first thing that hit my eyes is the against the rule astigmatism. And uh, against the rule astigmatism is one of the, uh, let's consider it uh, not an easy types of astigmatism as we can see. Uh, most of the against the rule astigmatism belongs to the ectatic corneal conditions. And uh, we have to put this in consideration. So we have to be cautious uh, while reading these maps once you see uh, against the rule estimate. This is the first. Uh, I can consider this, in my opinion, this is a red flag uh, light or mark. Another thing uh, is the thickness. Uh, as you can see, there are two important things in the thickness, as you can see in the uh, pentacam. First, it's below 500 microns, it's about 460, uh, 465 is the thinnest location, and the thinnest location is displaced away from the center. And uh, these two things is, are also considered uh, uh, a, of, a red uh, points or a red uh, flags for me to take, uh, to take decision. Um, the age of the patient is above 40, is almost approaching uh, 50s is he's 86 68 40 46 46, 46. Yes. and uh, and the patient refraction is almost always is astigmatic there is nothing except astigmatism another thing very important thing that i i noticed now is the manifest refraction if you see the manifest refraction that put by dr ala is it's minus three okay this is the minus three cylinder Although it's like on the corneal plane, it's just 2.2. 2. 2.2 here, and I don't know what's yes. the left eye. And that means that there is a slight difference between the corneal refractive uh, astigmatism, the corneal astigmatism, and the total astigmatism of the eye. And uh, this patient, as he is above 50, uh, above 40, he may have some type of uh, uh, astigmatic, uh, lenticular astigmatism. So this is a case which is a difficult case to take decision, uh, but it's for me, it's a dangerous case to do. Uh, Dr. Mazin, uh, I think the nine diameter, the, nine, the elevation maps having a nine diameter analysis zone uh, is uh, irritating for you, I believe. Uh, actually, uh, it is misleading because, as I told you, uh, the standard uh, numbers, the cutoff values, are based on the 8 millimeters. So we cannot uh, follow the table by Bill and Ambrosio in this case. But let's assume that this is 8 millimeter. For example, if we switch and we found it the same, okay, the same numbers. Yeah. I agree with uh, Dr. Mohammed Al Katib um, that the uh, against the rule astigmatism is a red flag especially if it is more than 1.5 diopters. And um, uh, for the thinnest location, actually, uh, yes, uh, below 470, I consider it as high risk, but uh, I no longer look at the displacement of the thinnest location. I, I used to look at it, but uh, let's say I, I did my own study, uh, not published, uh, my own study, I made like a comparison between normal corneas and uh, corneas with frank keratoconus, I did not find any significance, any statistic statistical significance in the displacement of the thinnest location. There the p-value was uh, insignificant. 
So I, I, I'm no, no longer um, looking to, uh, at the uh, uh, displacement of the thinnest location. Just I look at the thinnest location itself. Um, for the- so, so, uh, so, Sorry, Dr. Mazin, so you mean nowadays, why coordinate of the thinnest location position, you doesn't yeah. consider it at all, even no. if it is more than one? Yes. One even, millimeter uh, here, one. Like no. here it is no. more than one. You even yes. co doesn't consider it as yellow sign, even yellow sign. Yeah, no, no. For me, no. Yeah. But, um, but, yes. But Tell this is unpublished data. This is unpublished data. Yeah, this is because this is classic teaching. Yes, it is exactly. considered at risk factor. It is. It is. But yes. for me, I uh, if you look at the uh, table, the PS3 table, you will not find the uh, Y coordinate of the thinnest location as a factor. Dr. Uh, Mazen, can I ask you a question, please? Uh, yes. Do you have any explanation for this finding? Because this is against all the classical teaching we always... Yeah, I don't have an explanation. But this is the just statistical insignificance. It is insignificance, although uh, practically, yes, I agree with you that usually uh, ectopic coronal diseases are associated with vertical displacement of the thinnest location. I agree with you. But um, why I don't consider it? Uh, let me say that a part of my uh, study, uh, sometimes if we consider it in every case, uh, you may find yourself that putting a yellow flag or red flag even on and very normal corneas, okay? Um, I exclude it because if it is uh, uh, really an ectasia or uh, an abnormal cornea, it will show itself by other signs, not only by displacement of the thinnest location. So I never find a vertical displacement as a thinnest location, the thinnest location and I don't find any abnormality on the elevation map or the curvature map, and the cornea is abnormal. Okay, it doesn't make any sense to say that, okay, there is displacement at the thinnest location, and this cornea, because of this displacement, the cornea is abnormal. It makes nonsense because if it is abnormal, it will show itself by other signs, not only by only the displacement of the thinnest location. Uh, actually, I hope that the, I could... Actually, but, Dr. Mazen, I agree with you totally. I've been uh, practicing refractive surgery for a long time, and I didn't actually put any weight on such uh, displacement of the thinnest location. I actually, as you, as you have mentioned, I look at other things, but the mere displacement of the thinnest location is uh, non significant to me. Alone is not significant. Yeah. But, exactly. Uh, it is alone. It is exactly. That's that's it. Exactly. Let, let, let's agree. Oh. Let's agree about an important point uh, to be mentioned for all the audience. Um, diagnosis of ectatic corneal conditions or suspicious corneas does not depend upon single one parameter. Exactly. This is, this is uh, it must be agreed by all of us because yeah. it's a collection of data. It's a collection of yeah. uh, findings. It's a collection of uh, parameters. And that's why we, I, we agree all about this. I, I think Dr. Hatem agrees with us but, and Dr. Ghanim also. Sure, I agree, but ho one more question. How many times you find everything is okay and there is wide displacement of the AIDS? A lot of, a lot of cases, a lot of, yeah. a huge number of cases. Uh, you really, cornea is, is you very really. normal, very, very, very normal, and there is no misalignment during taking the capture, and there is displacement in the thinnest location. So I, it is very, I don't consider for, 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 for me, I find it very rare, maybe one or two kids, and, and this time I neglect it. As, as long as everything is okay, I consider it, it, it is uh, some sort of uh, fallacies of the machine or something like this. But uh, By the way, I, I, uh, yeah. Yeah, go on. Okay. Sorry. sorry. Go okay, on. no, no, I, I am listening to you. Oh, thank you. By the way, there is a strong correlation between displacement of the thinnest location and eye rubbing. <clears throat> eye rubber, they have displacement in the thinnest location. Could be, yeah. Okay. Especially okay. in the uh, uh, inferior temporal. 
because this is the side that the, the eyes come from. So inferior temporal in the right eye and the left eye. So you will find if you look at people rubbing their eyes too much, you will find there is displacement in the thinnest location. Yes, sure. And uh, okay. eye rubbers also has a, a, an, a, a, an incidence of uh, ectatic uh, corneal conditions, especially yes. unilateral ectasia. So uh, uh, I, I really appreciate that the concept of being that there is no single parameter to diagnose a keratoconus. I agree totally. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And um, I, in my practice, I, I pay a lot of attention for the for the it is, uh, displacement. It is, a, it, it is package. I, I find it. It's a package. It's a package. And the patient so, is a package. Yeah. All is it's one package. package. You I must agree to let me. In, in individualize it for every yeah. case. Okay. I agree let to me that. ask the audience. Uh, dear audience, we are going to ask you a question about this case. And you are asked to uh, answer one question, uh, choose one question from the following question. First, the summary of this case that 40, it is a 46 years old male with moderate against the rule astigmatism, about three diopters, thin cornea, normal Bellin Ambrosio enhanced ecstasy analysis, and uh, a PTA close to the lower standard of litigation. What is your decision? Please, uh, Fadi or Muhammad, put the question. Uh, what is your decision about where is the question? Uh, question. Yes. Yes. Uh, you don't do any refractive surgery, LASIK, PRK, ICRS, or TORIC ICL. What is your choice for this patient? Can we vote also? Hello. We have. We are not uh, going I to. I think, vote. unfortunately, no. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think panelists as the. No, they permit the... us. I did. He, well, <laughs> if they permit you, I'm okay. I will. I will. <laughs> I don't know. And me too. Exactly. I don't know why, but really. No, no, I, this is I by mistake permitted. they allowed, allowed speakers <laughs> to vote. By mistake from them. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we see the result? Uh, by the way, Dr. Ala, meanwhile. Y yes. Yes. Um, for, for the profile of uh, Bell and Ambrosio thickness profile, uh, the average is 1.2 something, and in the other eye is 1.3. So the average, whenever it is more than 1.1, I consider it as well uh, like moderate risk. So um, the case the is full of, of yeah. Uh, if you can go back to the Bellin Ambrosio okay. display, I can show it to you. Okay. And at this yeah. point, Dr. Ma Ma Dr. Mazin, there is a question of Ron of the audience, Nada Yusuf, say, what about the exclusion maps in the Bell and Bruce display? They are suspicious in both eyes. These scores are also suspicious. Can we consider it subclinical ectatic case? It's one question. Yeah. Um, just a second. For the average, uh, oh. as you see here, there, above the uh, curves, there is a number in green, which is min, right? Yes. yes. Above min, there is average, AVG. It is 1.31. Yes. If it is more than 1.1, okay, um, I consider it as moderate risk, but I exclude it if everything is fine as well. So if it is a single finding, I discard it. Yeah, just mm -hmm. a remark. Yeah. Okay. Now, the question from the audience uh, that, um, let me say, the tomographic definition of keratoconus, there must be abnormal anterior curvature and abnormal posterior elevation, okay? This is um, an abnormal anterior curvature because there is a skewed radial axis. And if I assume that this is the eight millimeter display of the elevation, if I, uh, let's consider it as eight millimeter. Um, actually, we have to look at the refractive error. The refractive error is myopic and it is posterior, then the cutoff value is uh, 17. Here, this is the left eye and um, it is plus 14. So it is not. Now, uh, let me see the right eye. This is the right eye. This Mind is the left. Eye. I, I no, see the, the left right. now I, in front of me. Now the right. Maybe now the right. right, okay. 
Oh. It is plus 19. So yes. based on, because it is uh, myopic, it is considered as abnormal. So yes, uh, we can consider it as like early keratoconus. Okay. Uh, so uh, in the panelist uh, point of view, you don't, uh, you will not operate on such patients or... Uh, oh, for sure not. Not for operate on the, cornea, on the cornea. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe no, uh, you don't operate at all because يعني, what's the problem of a patient with a minus three cylinder and he may wear a very nice fancy eyeglass. Exactly. Yeah. If, if, he, if he dislike, <laughs> if he hates his glasses completely. No, I let him get a fancy uh, let, get, shift, let him shift into lens refractive surgery. Let, let him let him in. let him get a fancy nice uh, up to top model glasses and he will be fine. <laughs> I agree with Dr. <laughs> Mohammed. But uh, what is the age of the patient? Sorry? 46. It's 40 Toric, something. Uh, but that's the point. <coughs> it's 46. Historic IOL, refractive lens, it's a change. Historic why, IOL, do, why not? I asked him. Oh, come on. Really clear lens extraction for this patient. Yes. With historic IOL implantation, I find it effective for him. No, Toric. I don't do clear lens extraction for such refractive error. It's a very small yes. error to do. There is a three, a three diopters of, a, of cylinder. Still, still, the, this fancy type of glasses is much more cheaper and will give him a better vision. He, he is coming to ask for surgery. For the the Ragil Ragil Bayan Samak fil fil Naidi fil. Type of hadrak or fi aghna min Bayan Samak al yomendo. Bayan Samak Samak el Sandari. Iskandaran. 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 He had lay. Ain mushkila. Let us go to the other. Let, let, let's finish. No rule of cornea refractive surgery by any means yes. in a patient like this. This yes. is the message. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. The second case is a 47 years old lady with the uh, right. Uh, she has a plus three or uh, sphere of hypopia, no cylinder, seeing one with uh, each eye and asking for refractive <laughs> surgery. Uh, this is her uh, uh, Pentacam 4 map refractive display, and she has a K2 of 44. She The KM is 43.5, as Dr. Uh, Mazens mentioned. The thinnest location is 492, and uh, the pupil center is uh, 5.1. Uh, she has some angle kappa, as you can see, at the x-axis. The thinnest location is also displaced. We said it's not important, uh, very important, as we mentioned. And uh, this is her uh, Bellin Ambrosio profile. Uh, um, this is the, the left eye, same. Nothing more, 507 tennis location, uh, 42.9 km. Uh, but, uh, uh, sorry, what is the uh, number corresponding to the thinnest location in the right eye and left eye? Because I cannot see very well the green is dim plus 22 or 507. Uh, here, plus 29 here. or something. 29. Plus 29. Mm. Because um, it should be 28. However, if it, uh, let's assume that it's borderline. Now, it's very obvious that this patient has large angle kappa. Very large. Both eyes, of course. And this is why, yes, this is why Bellin Ambrosia, Ambrosio shows false positive. If you go to the Bellin Ambrosio, you will find that it shows... Uh, a yellow flag. This, this is because yellow. of large angle kappa. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, this PTI also is, uh, is it normal? Do you consider it normal? Yeah, almost, almost normal. And what about the, the average? Is, mm. Yeah, the average is very, very high, 1.58. Yeah, red here. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I consider this abnormal cornea. Of course, it is not keratoconus, but this is abnormal cornea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. below 500, I don't do LASIK below 500. 
uh, smile for hypermetropia is not yet. So, and PRK, I don't touch the cornea with PRK if uh, hypermetropia. So, um, we can think about a lens based, for example, but the patient, I think it uh, is 47. Yes. Uh, is that right or 46? Yes, about 47. Yeah. Okay, 47. What is the AC? Um, let, let's see the uh, anterior chamber parameters, please, on the Pentacam, the previous one. Uh, here? Yeah, because... so we have anterior chamber. It's very shallow, 2.34. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the angle is 26.8. Usually for the angle, it should be more than 30. And for the anterior chamber depth, it should be more than 2.8. If it is more than 3, it would be much better as well. So uh, no way for ICL. So the last uh, thing to do is maybe clear lens extraction with uh, premium IOL uh, or EDOF or uh, um, yeah. monovision or whatever. But of course, to think about this, we have to study the wave front, corneal wave front. So do we have the corneal wave front? No. No, I don't have it right now. To uh, for uh, for the sake of the IOL or the. Can I have a comment, please? Okay. Yes, uh, uh, what about the colors of the maps? Uh, they are uh, reversed. They are right. like opposite. Right. If you have a look yes. on these maps, okay, you will find that on the elevations. Uh, let us for the elevations, uh, front elevations, back elevations. We'll find that the hot line, uh, hot colors are minus for values. Negative, yes. And uh, 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 cool uh, colors are positive. This is, positive. I think, the uh, one of the displays that I think is the holiday display or something like that. And mm -hmm. uh, as Dr. Mazin said in the beginning, uh, to have your normal uh, adapted eyes adapted uh, maps, you have to check that the color codes put here is the international codes, as Dr. Mazin said. And that's why uh, such maps, if it's, it does not obey the same rule, it may get a lot of uh, bizarre interpretations because of the, uh, the minus, you will see it hot, and the positive, you will see it... Uh, 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 cold. Uh, cold and this this is this is uh, an important point uh, and dr second... Mason, here it is eight the diameter of the elevation it's eight and in spite yeah. of that we have a lot of extrapolated data also uh, on the, in the periphery uh, what should we do no, no, we this use... is yeah the eight millimeter is for the for the best fit sphere but it is not the nine millimeter display mm -hmm. it's the nine not the... millimeter you can find it like uh, as a magnifier on the upper upper left corner. So yeah, uh, if it was nine millimeter with this extra, yeah. If it was with the nine in, in the nine millimeter with these extrapolated, then uh, of course I will not accept it. But a good a good uh, remark, uh, Doctor Ala. Good remark. Okay. Okay. And also there is something I noticed that here it is uh, in the Bell and Ambrosio the reference database. It's Myopic, not hyperopic. Yes, not hyperopic. This is wrong. Would that make a big difference in the display? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Actually, not the, in the display, but the in the uh, uh, the numbers in the like the DT, DH, DP, and so on. Okay, the D indexes they will change, and the flags <laughs> will change as well. Maybe if we switch to the hyperopic, you will find them. Most of them is white and yellow rather than red. Right. Yes. Can I, I can I ask you a question, please? Uh, backing to uh, okay, this is how we can read the map and uh, what the the decision based on the data in the map. But let's go back to the, for the refraction. These are just plus three diopters, right? With no cylinders. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yes. So can I ask a question for the panelists? Have you ever seen a keratoconus case with a plus refraction? I've seen yes. one. Yes, I have seen two, and that's uh, it was uh, amazing. Yeah, I didn't know what's this, but it is pure. It was pure keratoconus with plus I, pure keratoconus. I, I have because seen you one know that the keratoconus. She, she is a doctor. 
He is must be from, myopic, was, not hyperopic. No, no, no. She was formerly more hypermetrop. Hyper she was a doctor. I know her. Uh, she was more hypermetrop and getting less hypermetrop was shift to, to keratoconus. When she diagnosed as keratoconus, she was about plus one and a half. But she was younger like this. Sure. She was about 30. And, was, and made one eye intraconal eggs and the cross-linking in the other one. But it was pure plus or... Uh, no, 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 a... there is cylinder. cylinder. No, no, yeah, there because is usually... Uh... Sure, sure, there is astigmatism. But yeah. both, both were plus. Usually... Yeah, that's because okay. usually hypermetropia comes with the pellucid marginal degeneration. That's, uh, that's what that's what I'm yes. saying. Uh, that's that's this is why I'm asking this question because uh, keratoconus is not commonly associated with uh, hypermetropia. It's very very uh, rarely. Other, otherwise, otherwise the the pellucid marginal degeneration is much more uh, uh, concerned with the mixed astigmatism and the plus element of the sphere and this. Uh, that's why I was asking. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ali Zawawi also uh, is uh, sending a message, said that he he met a case like that with uh, PLUS, but uh, it's a very uh, nice comment from you, Dr. Kateb, uh, that you can uh, 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 draw our attention to this uh, uh, possibility that it is a pellucid, not a uh, not uh, uh, keratoconus. Uh, uh, and if we go back again to this map, it's not a pellucid at all. Not, yeah, not it's the not shape a of pellucid. It's, it's not, it's not the shape of the pellucid. Or something like this. It's yeah, totally it's, it's, it's not a pellucid. So back to the decision. Are you, are, are you doing a, a question for the audiences to ask? Yes. To ask about, yes. Uh, after the this question. The let's, summary, let's, 47 years old female, hyperopic plus three in each eye, deep cornea, and uh, thin cornea, thinnest is 492, large angle kappa, abnormal Bellin Ambrosio enhanced ectasia profile. The question, uh, here is the question, uh, LASIK, would you do LASIK, PRK, ICL, RLE, refractive lens exchange with trifocal or EDOF uh, IOL? The, the audience, would you pl would you please uh, vote? What? What's her age again, please? 47. 47. 46, 47, something like that. Dr. Ala, patients are in the mid-age. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Middle-age crisis. <laughs> that, uh, Doctor, that, Dr. Mazin, you consider any case uh, thickness less than 500 is one risk factor or one 480? In your yeah, box, I know 470, but but uh, for me, I consider less than 480. Is no for, for uh, less Dr. than 400, say 500. Yeah, less no, than no, no. I didn't say 500 at all. Let me answer no. this question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, but yeah. Now for me, to... uh, for me, less than 470. I don't do LASIK. I don't do PRK. Yeah. Between 470 and 500, I may do PR, PRK, but not LASIK. To do LASIK, it should be more than 500. Now, there is an exception. This is related to the population because um, actually, let's take a, an example. In uh, North Africa, like in Morocco, for example, the corneas there are thin normally thin. So you may find uh, a high percentage of people with normal corneas, like 450. So I think these cut of points of, uh, of thickness should be normalized according to the population. Uh, mm. What I'm depending are Western statistics for the 470 and 500, they are Western, but they are not related to the Middle East, for example. Um, and uh, I would love to uh, participate in uh, uh, like a study to, to make our normative data, own normative data in the Middle East, a multi-center study. So you never do agree. LASIK, LASIK less than 500. Yeah, I never do that. Even minus two, minus one, everything is okay. Yeah, even. 
دكتور كاتب uh, first I agree totally with دكتور مازن that uh, we don't have our own normative data and all these data are uh, uh, related to the population of course and uh, I agree totally Uh, second, uh, I rely more upon, upon the PTA, the percentage of tissue ablation, more than the, uh, the percentage of tissue ablation, more than the, the 500. Uh, in the beginning of my career, I was, uh, I was strict to the 500 micron, but uh, I changed this a little bit with, uh, with uh, more and more years, uh, especially with the femto second laser. Uh, in the femto second laser, I can have the uh, I can be courage more, and I can go for uh, 490 and 480 sometimes in high props, but in myops no. Okay. Uh, okay. As in, uh, a good point. Mm -hmm. So, Doctor Mohammed, uh, uh, in myops you are still strict to the 500, but for the hyperop you may yeah. go down yeah. to 480. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a good point actually because the uh, ablation is peripheral. Yes. Now, uh, to, uh, we have to, to put in mind that even the femtosecond has a standard deviation in the cutting, which is plus minus 18 oh. microns. So, yeah. for example, if I plant for 90 micron flap, I may have it. Uh, for example, 108, or maybe I, I may have it like uh, 72. So mm -hmm. plus minus 18 microns. Uh, this is one thing. Uh, the other thing, yeah, I consider the PTA, of course, it should be less than 40%. So I consider both points. But considering PTA alone, uh, I'm not talking about uh, uh, you, Dr. Mohammed, but, but uh, I'm talking about some surgeons really they calculate it uh, like this. They look at the PTA only. And for example, if it is minus one and the patient is 450, because okay. the PTA, because the PTA is below 40%, they will go and do a flap and they will do LASIK because the PTA is below 40. And I think you agree with me that 450, we cannot touch even if it is minus one. And yeah, even sure. if the EP PTA is less than forty uh, percent, so this is why I would I wanted to highlight this point. Yeah, sure. This I agree a, totally with uh, Doctor Mazza. Of course, this is a very important point. A very good and clear message to our audience uh, to follow the opinion of experts. It's very good. Um, case number three is a male patient, thirty-seven now, not forty-seven. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, manifest refraction uh, right minus 7.5 with a minus half cylinder seeing 0.4 plus best corrected vision the left eye is minus 8.5 with minus 1.5 cylinder axis 120 uh, with a vision of mi uh, 0.4 minus uh, this is the topography map of this patient showing uh, steep uh, inferior steepness uh, and the K2 is 44.8 and uh, astigmatism also is the same like the refraction. Uh, the analysis of this uh, patient with the topography shows a keratoconus uh, grade one. This also the left eye showing the same with uh, some skewing of the radial axis. Also, it doesn't show here a keratoconus, but uh, the indices here are all a lot of red colors. Uh, the topography, the pentacam, the pentacam um, is more or less uh, good. It's, it, it doesn't show, uh, uh, it shows only the inferior steepness. The, the K2 and the KM is 44. The thinnest location is 541 uh, with little displacement of this thinnest location from the corneal apex. And also the pupillary center is a little bit um, descent, but not a significant angle kappa because it's less than 0.2. And the back elevations, uh, they are also on nine diameter analysis, but it is, the, the values are uh, insignificant. The, the Bellin Ambrosio also is 
the the spatial profile and the PTI are more or less good. Uh, this is the left eye, the same, uh, 44, 545. Uh, here, the no angle kappa. Um, the, the, cent the, the, the thinnest location is at the center. Uh, the back elevations are uh, good, plus 7, plus 10, plus 7, plus 6. And the uh, Belen Ambrosio, the on the left side, it's green. The, the 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 curves are also good. The indices are good. Uh, what's your opinion? What do you what do you do with this ugly looking uh, topography? Uh, uh, what are the refractions for this patient? And minus the seven and minus eight. 35. Minus 7. 37 mm -hmm. minus 7.5 and 8.5. Okay, and she is not reaching uh, 1. No, it doesn't reach 1. Uh, is, it, is this because she wear eyeglasses uh, lately in her life or what? Is uh, anatropic amplitude or? Uh, I can't recall right now because it, it was a little bit, uh, yani few years ago, but I can't recall now the reason. I can't uh, even for, hypothesize. Back, back, back to the theory of red flags and yellow flags. Mm -hmm. um, the, the topographies, the two of, the, of both eyes are really bad. OK. Mm -hmm. um, I can't consider these are fallacious measurements or uh because of dry eye or something like that because it's also present in the pentacam if you open the pentacam the yes the inferior is steepening yes this is this is this is there is a screwing and there is an inferior steepening that looks like the pmg pellucid marginal degeneration yes this is the uh, uh, but the thinnest the location is not here it's not here it's yes not here. i know but dr but, mazin said it's not a rule take care of that so i mean uh, but uh, the topographic data in front of us are not uh, goes with ease add to this point that the refraction of minus seven minus eight and she's still young they are still yeah. high and at the same time she does not reach one or point eight or point seven or point it's a very poor eye visually visually mm -hmm. so uh, we, uh, if this is my patient, I will ask her one question. Did you notice any progression in your vision, uh, diminish, diminution of vision recently, or decrease of vision recently? This is a very yeah. important question. Okay. Because if she is so, so this is, will be a PMD, pellucid marginal degeneration, and we will go uh, through uh, the pellucid marginal degeneration management, by if it is progressive or stationary, or it is to do or not to do a lot of things. Uh, are there any reason for this deepening other than pellucid? Do, do you think about anything maybe in the tear film or in the, there was maybe no scarring or anything? The tear film can affect the topography, but for the yeah. pentacam, I don't think. And uh, The pentacam uh, is normal. This is a good pentacam. Contact lens usage. Contact lens. Contact lens warpage. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, now, does it does it do uh, something like me. that? Inferior steepening? Yeah, it does. I, I I have cases, a lot of cases like this. Now, uh, if you allow me to comment on this, now um, there is there is uh, uh, let's say disparity between the refraction of the patient and the steepness of the cornea. The cornea is considered flat. This cornea because the center is almost forty-four diopter. And the patient has high myopia, so it is axial. Probably it is axial myopia. Now, axial mm -hmm. myopia usually is associated with. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Axial myopia is usually associated with degenerations in the macula and the retina. So we have, first of all, uh, we have to think. Um, let's start from the front. Maybe the patient is not reaching the one because of high order abrasions, because this cornea for sure has high order abrasions. Uh, 
Um, the second thing, we have to look at the uh, uh, transparency of the cornea itself and the lens. Maybe the patient has cataract, early cataract, presenile cataract, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, the third thing is the fundus. We have to uh, check the macula, to check the optic disc. Um, uh, number two, we have to measure the visual acuity, the potential visual acuity, either with a pinhole, which is the simplest thing to do, or by using um, a hard contact lens in order to compensate for this irregularity on the anterior surface. Of course, we have to uh, ask the patient whether she is using contact lenses or not, because um, this inferior spot uh, corresponds a lot to a warpage of contact lens usage. Um, I don't consider this period marginal generation because uh, the crab claw is not specific, is not a hallmark to pilocid marginal regeneration. Any inferior keratoconus is associated with the crab claw pattern, but the differentiating uh, sign between pilocid and other types of keratoconus is the thickness map, because on the thickness map, we should see the bell sign corresponding to the inferior thinning, band thinning in the inferior cornea. And uh, here we can see that the uh, thickness map is concentric. However, I don't think that this is keratoconus. It is not keratoconus, it is not pellucid, it is not an ectetic disease either. I think it is warpage because of contact lenses, but however, it is not severe enough to explain why the patient is seeing only 0 0.4. Um, we have to know why. We have to check the whole eye and we have to, do, to measure the potential visual acuity either by pin by pinhole or by uh, like a rigid contact lens as a trial according to that we can uh, we can judge we can say okay what to do whether to go for for, for example for fake KUL for um, if the patient was using uh, contact lens of course we have to give sufficient time for the patient to stop it one two three weeks four weeks even putting lubricants and then recapture the patient uh, thank you very much, Dr. Mezen, for this uh, elaborate uh, analysis. Uh, and I actually, I actually, okay, Dr. Hatim. Okay. One more, one more point. And I think in this condition, the history is very important. Whether using contact lens, as Dr. Mezen asked it, or was not using glasses at all. Sometimes in Egypt, we find patient up till the age like this, and he never used the glasses. When you try, if he never used the glass and you test his vision, you may find the best corrected vision is something like 0.3 or 0.4. If he used it for two to three months and come again, you will find the vision improved with the same glasses to be more than this. So mm -hmm. history is very important in this condition. Yeah, I, I wrote me? this uh, map, uh, because this case because of the discrepancy between the topography and the tomography, that, that was uh, yani, a big uh, difference. Th that's the main point. Uh, the reason, of course, you, you all uh, discuss the reasons and the possible reasons, and they are all plausible. They are all could be there. Uh, sorry for and the- I, I, I feel in, in okay. case of the, like this, uh, repeating all the investigation after two, one or two, three months of intensive lubricants may change the difference in the, between these two maps. Maybe the tomography affected, by, uh, sorry, the tomography affected by an element of a dryness or something like this. Sure, sure. Uh, summary of this case, it is a moderate myopia, or it's, uh, I consider it moderate, not very high, uh, not high as Dr. Mezen said, but uh, the, the cutoff values are uh, in a little bit uh, un unde undecided. Uh, moderate myopia in a 37 years old male, best corrected visual acuity of 0.4, corneal typography, inferior steepening, pentacam, nothing abnormal. Uh, decision for the audience. Um, what do you do for this patient? No refractive surgery, LASIK, ICL, uh, refractive lens exchange with monovision. Uh, there, are, there are other possibilities, of course, but... Uh, these are the things uh, that came to my mind when I was preparing the lecture. And 
host and panelist cannot vote. Hadr. Okay. Uh, okay, the result, no refractive surgery, 36%, uh, ICL, 33%. Okay, uh, our dear panelists, what do you think? What do you do for this patient? If you uh, uh, did everything and do you do surgery, no surgery? I myself, I will not do uh, cornea refractive surgery. I will go for lenticular. Uh, or... Uh, of course, after uh, checking the posterior segment and the macula and everything, uh, yeah. because uh, I'm not feeling ease with this cornea. It's just a feeling. Okay. Dr. Mazen? Uh, now, yeah, for, uh, for me, I have to, to see the wavefront, the corneal wavefront mm -hmm. before I decide. Of course, no way for uh, laser-based refractive surgery, uh, lens-based is possible after exclusion of other factors like Dr. Mohammed said, uh, macula and so on, so on. But I have to know why it is 0 0.4. Yeah. If it is high order yeah, operations, of then of course mm -hmm. we cannot use trifocal, no metal, so no premium lenses. So uh, we may go for monofocal with mini monovision or monovision, okay, but after looking at the corneal wavefront. And I think this eye has high order abrasions, comma, it's especially a, it's comma. Very possible, yeah, very possible. Do, Dr. Mazin, it is a possibility for you here to make refractive lens exchange under the age of 40? For me, I don't do this. For me, it is I'm a cut of point. Uh, I never do refractive lens surgery under age of 40, I never. I, I, I didn't never give the patient the option at all. Yeah, I never do this below 45, even. No, no, I mean for me, uh, 40. <laughs> below, below 45. Of course, uh, <laughs> this is the, the rule. This is the rule not to uh, yeah. uh, rob the patient of his ability to uh, accommodate. But uh, uh, sometimes uh, monovision with reflective lens exchange is uh, an economical, it's an economical uh, decision, not uh, not. Uh, not a scientific one. So uh, one. One question yeah. from me to the panelist. If this case with this refraction, minus 7.5 and 8.5 in the other eye, and everything is okay in the cornea, for me, I, I recommend taking IOL for all these cases. Any case above minus seven, I recommend, I, I, I give the patient the choice, but I recommend taking IOL, really. Taking, mainly ICL by name. I am not fan of yes. iris clonings at all. I, uh, I agree. I find I agree. Vision, vision is is better. Quality of vision is better. It is yeah. a reversible procedure. A I little bit with, expensive, uh, but safer. I agree yeah. with Dr. Hatem totally. But uh, I think in Alexandria, our patients are not that rich, rich as <laughs> as in, uh, <laughs> in <Upper laughs> and that's Upper why Egypt. Upper Egypt are always have a lot of money. So they, I think, they can pay for the ICL. Many monuments under 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 our houses. <laughs> <laughs> that, but uh, seriously speaking, of course, the ICL is better whenever you can do it. We, we, of course, we, uh, we are MD not speaking MD about Dubai. Huh? <laughs> I, well, we did an MD thesis. No, in Dubai, Dubai, in Dubai, Dubai it's uh, <laughs> Dr. Mezin <laughs> can share his experience with the patients there. Yeah, in Dubai, actually, yeah, much different. Um, yeah. A lot of options, a lot of options, yes. Yeah. But you prefer to make fake IOL in case like this? Yes. Minus seven, fake minus eight, I, yeah, yeah. I don't yes. do clear lens extraction. I don't do it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. If you yeah. have the facility to do clear lens, uh, to do ICL in all patients, why don't you do it? It's uh, very nice. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, this is, uh, um, it's been now uh, an hour and a half and we still have uh, any resistant audience that are following us. So uh, we will continue. What do you think? Check Dr. Mazin, Mazin because he is uh, uh, two hours forward for us, uh, in front of us. So, so check him. I think he, uh, he is oh, fresh. Dr. Mazin, when you feel 1130. fat, it's 11 but we are enjoying no this problem. Session. As okay. long as I'm learning from you, I'm going to continue. 
thank you. <laughs> thank you. This is a great compliment from you. <laughs> I thank appreciate you very much. it. So let's go on then. <laughs> 35 years go. old female with the right uh, refraction minus three and minus 1.5 cylinder. One seeing one minus and minus 2.5 sphere in the left eye with minus 1.75 axis 90, seeing one minus. Uh, uh, this is her uh, pentacam. It's a little bit old, but uh, it has a message. Uh, as you can see, the K2 is 44.3, KM 43.6. The thinnest location is 546, and uh, it is a little bit deviated from the center, uh, from the apex, from the corneal apex, and there is no angle kappa. The, the, the back elevations and the, and the anterior elevations are normal. Uh, here, uh, the diameter is, oh, is, uh, is, I think it says auto-generated uh, auto or it is uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's not fixed manually. So the, mm -hmm. the machine just gives uh, the diameter by itself. And uh, here you can see that on the left side, we have the, the maps. Uh, the back elevation has a big uh, red spot, meaning uh, that there is some uh, ectasia or some protrusion on the back surface. The back, the, the curves are almost normal. Nothing, uh, here also the average is 1.22 as Dr. Uh, Mazin said. The, I think BT, BTI is depressed a little bit at five, really? Change it, uh, there is a deflection I, or uh, so no, it's not clear? It is the same light. No, there is some okay. drop at yeah, five, almost. at five millimeter. Mm. Here? We can consider it almost uh, uh, homogeneous. Homogeneous. Okay. Here also we have against almost. the rule astigmatism on the left eye, and this is the mm -hmm. right eye. We have uh, against the rule astigmatism, it is 1.2, 44 uh, km, uh, 535, back elevations normal. Uh, nothing uh, on these maps we have nothing abnormal but also we have this yellow spot on the back surface of the uh, analysis of the enhanced ectasia profile and also the pti are normal uh, my what, question is what, what is the reason of this what is the reason of the yellow and the and the uh, should be uh, in, uh, be confident in this and don't do uh, consider it an ectatic cornea or what should we do uh, uh, let us see the refraction again please the refraction uh, yes. 31.5 against the rule astigmatism okay and for the uh, pentacam dr ala you stop share screen i don't know why okay reshare again no problem mm -hmm. Yes. Open the yeah. other uh, yeah, sure, uh, sure. Let us see the pentacam. Cover the solar eyes. Show you, Dr. Ali. Show. Pentacam. Pentacam, yeah, Dr. Ali. Okay. Oh. So, uh, now, pentacam, okay. Okay. Ibn Akbar. What do you think? Uh, uh, is this uh, this cooing or this uh, uh, shape of the anterior surface? Uh, I know you have already said, Dr. Ketter, that this against the rule is a red flag. You don't like it. You don't uh, feel good with it. But everything is okay. Everything is okay otherwise. What's the reason of this red thing? Dr. Mazen is our expert here. The reason is the this elevation in the back. Uh, bring the 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 first image, the the first the, the first four map. map, the four maps. Yeah, as you can see, there is a localized elevations in the front and the back elevations. This like an island. Yeah, it's an elevation. 
It's localized elevation. It's not uh, a diffuse elevation that can cannot be, can be mistake, can be ignored by the billing software. So I think this is the main cause for the uh, this red background. Look, it's magnified in the exclusion map. Mm -hmm. No, no. Uh, the, uh, bring the enhanced the doctor, enhanced ecclesia software. Bring the enhanced IO. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's not excluded. It's still there, even mm -hmm. after excluding the center of four millimeter. It's still there. You can detect the map. Can detect it. Uh, uh, for the first uh, time, I thought that because uh, the previous maps uh, are at the twelve diameter uh, of cornea, but here it's all nine. All the magnifying uh, lens is there, and it's all nine millimeter. Here, look, it's uh, it's opened. It is nine here. Yeah. So uh, uh, what I, I want, no... uh, what I need to convey to our audience, um, Yanni, uh, does when I see such a yellow or red, should I get alarmed and stop it and do, do uh, don't do anything? Or, uh, it's let's a collection. Let, of, let's hear, Doctor Mazin. Let's hear, Doctor Mazin. Doctor Mazin, what's your opinion? No. Uh, I consider this a false positive, actually, because uh, it's very clear that the posterior elevation is very normal. Even uh, the best fit sphere is not millimeter, uh, 8 millimeter, but it is around 8 millimeter. It is 7.68 for the posterior and 8.33. So if it is uh, 8 millimeter, it wouldn't change so much. So um, the shape itself, yes, it is asymmetric. The shape is not uh, the hourglass that we, we know uh, for the regular astigmatism. This is like, uh, let's say that the patient has an irregular astigmatism, irregular astigmatism, especially on the posterior corneal surface. But this irregular astigmatism is not abnormal. It is not like uh, an ectasia. But because Bellin Ambrosio display depends on elevations, so it is sensitive enough to show false positives, okay? It is sensitive enough to show false positives. So for me, I consider these findings on the BAD as, uh, as uh, uh, false positives. I don't consider them. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is a 35 years old female with low myopic error, low against the rule astigmatic error, average thinnest pachymetric reading, normal front and back elevation values, abnormal back elevation on the Bellin and Rosie enhanced ecstasy and ecstasy analysis and PTI close to the lower standard of the patient. Question to the, to the audience. Uh, what is your decision? No refractive surgery, LASIK, PRK, or other thing in your mind? Um, this is an easy decision. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see the result. <laughs> for you as expert, for us who are just learning. Uh, maybe well, there's a difference in Alexandria from the Upper Egypt in such conditions, <laughs> according to the patients. <laughs> Where is the risk? The reason and the result is gone. Result, please. Yes, yes. PRK 41% and LASIK 37. So they will do ref uh, cornea refractive surgery. Uh, I'm wondering why did they choose PRK because it's safer, maybe, when they saw this uh, Bellin Ambrosio enhanced. Uh, That's why I, I told you it's an easy decision. For me, I will go for the safest. It's yes, the PRK. The yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, I do the oh. same. PRK, yes. Not okay. not lazy. No, no. because but because you, I, but, but Dr. Mazin, uh, you uh, said it is insignificant. Yeah, it is you insignificant. Said it is it's significant, it is valueless. So why you don't you make lazy? For me, for me, when any suspicious, I never do any refractive search. Wait and repeat. It is my, my own routine. But you said and you have the experience to be trusted that it is it is normal. Yeah, what's is. what's in Bill and Prozo is insignificant at all. Why you don't yeah. make lazy? Uh, first of all, because it is against the rule astigmatism. Yes. It is less than one and a half. 
yeah, it is. But it's against the rule astigmatism. It is against the rule astigmatism. Yeah, I know, I know. I want to explain to our colleague. Wait a minute, Muhammad. Yes. <laughs> second, second, the posterior surface has an irregular, ast irregular astigmatism. The it, is surface, it is 0.2. It no, is 0.2 no, no. just in no, the posterior. Uh, I don't, uh, I, look, um, a very good question, a very good point. It, it is 0.2. The 0.2 uh, yes. measures the astigmatism within three millimeters, but the cornea starts pushing out under the eye pressure. Okay. So the posterior surface of the cornea here is not normal enough to give me the confidence that, okay, I'm, I, I can go for LASIK. That's, that's very good. Oh. Okay, uh, case number five. No, uh, let me ask Dr. Mazen a question. How about smile in such a case? Smile, yeah. Smile is an, uh, a good option as well. Even in this small error? Um, With one and a half delta cylinder? Yeah. Uh, if we consider the, the error, yes, I, I agree with you. No, it, uh, it's not recommended. Although it is theoretically can be done. Hmm. It can be done theoretically. But usually I don't do smile below three diopters, usually. OK. But I'm talking about tomography. Tomography-wise, uh, we can go for smile. So, some of the audiences were asking, uh, why don't you do a wave front guided? Uh, you can do PRK, wave front guided PRK. It's, not a, yeah. uh, it's better, of course. But we were talking about the technique itself, the LASIK PRK. Just I'm answering one of the questions. You so, you sometimes so Dr. Mazin sometimes you can do fem to fem to smile for a case in which not candidate for fem to lazy. Yes, I consider this smile, this this very narrow margin. Yeah, uh, I consider or, smile is similar to PRK in terms of biomechanics. Okay, because of the, uh, I have many cases, um, I will skip some of the cases. Why? Why? Uh, because I mean, it's so bad now. I mean, Dr. Mazin, I'm not going to be so bad. I'm not going to be so bad. I'm not going to be so Let me يعني, jump to case eight and then go back if you have time to uh, number five and six and seven. Uh, because I need to know your opinion as panelists regarding uh, the follow-up or the, the progression of cases of keratoconus. Uh, what are the pentacam criteria that you follow? Uh, so this is a 22 years old female uh, asking, uh, uh, sorry, uh, no, no, this is not the case, sorry. Uh, this is the case. 32 years old female uh, with plus one uh, sphere and minus 2.5 cylinder axis 65 seeing 0.16 and the left eye is minus 1.75 sphere minus two cylinder and 100 uh, axis 0 0.4. Uh, this is her uh, her pentacam display and it, it is uh, uh, Frank uh, Kratkonis. Um, of course, the profiles are abnormal. And uh, this is the left eye, also the same, more steepening inferiorly. Uh, but it is less keratoconic than the other one. It, the, the K max, the KM is 43, and uh, the back elevation is plus 13. Uh, the profile also the posterior the the Bellin ambrosio is not uh, yani is not normal see here it is not normal uh, she had the cornea cross linking in both eyes performed and after one year of follow up the refraction uh, is almost the same but the vision is better she's seeing 0.4 with the right eye Best corrected, it was 0.16, and with the left eye, it became 0.8 after being 0.4 preoperatively. 
the question is, uh, I, I didn't have the difference map, uh, unfortunately, but when you look at both maps, uh, the pre-operative and one year follow-up, uh, what are the criteria do you look at? Do you look at the KM or do you look at the thinnest location or back elevation? What are the clues for progression? Either a patient who did chronic cross-linking or who didn't uh, do chronic cross-linking and you are following him or her up. Here, you can see that the numbers are the same after one year, 40, 44 and it is 44. The thinnest location is 500 something and it's 532 also. Uh, the K-Max is the same, 50... Uh, 3.3 3 and 52.5. One, one, one drop, one delta. Uh, this, this is the post-operative the, on the right side. This is the... Sorry, this is the... I'm sorry. I don't know. It's, I have to enlarge it. I don't see the numbers. Uh, press biopia, Dr. Ala. Press biopia. I am. No. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> <that> my, <laughs> gloves are, <laughs> my gloves are not working. For me. The multifocal, I have to do extend my neck like this to see the, <laughs> the screen. <laughs> okay. Um, Dr. Mazin and Dr. Ketab, tell us your scheme. When you look at a mask pre and post. Uh, Yani, after some time in a keratoconus patient, after some time, what do you look at? And what do you consider progressed? Of course, it's a big question, but uh, I need it simple, simple for the yeah. audience. Dr. Mohammed, please. Dr. Ma'ula, Dr. Mazin, please. I myself, I pay more attention to the clinical part more than the investigational part. Uh, of course, I used to follow up my patient and I tell her after doing the cross-linking, uh, if she is below 40 years of age, that you will be visiting me on a regular basis every six months till you reach 40. Uh, and I sometimes follow some patients about after 40 or so, but on a one-year basis till 45 years of age. Uh, this is my scheme. Uh, the main alarming point for me is changes in the best corrected visual acuity. Uh, because I tell my patient that uh, during these six months, if you are wearing your glasses and you have to wear your glasses or contact lenses or RGP or whatever the visual aid that she is using, uh, you keep using it so that you can detect minute changes in your vision, best corrected visual acuity. And whenever you discover any change within these six months before the next visit, you have to visit me. And then I start doing my investigations to check and the refraction to check if there is any changes happened or not. Uh, if I go to the investigational part, the, uh, I use the different maps and the, um, the Kiri, the corneal curvature map, is the sagittal curvature is the, one of the mo most important things that I look for. And the elevation maps at the center, front elevation and back elevation. I don't rely upon the back elevation to a certain extent and the thickness because I believe that the uh, superficial haze that happens after the cross linking and that means it's successful. Uh, sometimes it may uh, um, affect the uh, accuracy of the changing in the thicknesses if you are following up thickness. But I rely upon the key readings. I rely upon uh, the elevations front and back surface. Of course, after the first important issue is the clinical, uh, is the change in the best corrected visual act. This is my first. So do you depend on certain numbers in difference or it's not, uh, there are no, no cut-off values? No, again, again, it's a collection of data. 
because I can't rely upon if I, if the patient came to me and I, I discovered that the refraction are still the same and she's seeing the same best correct visual active from the last visit and nothing changed and I discover uh, uh, key readings that increased one or two diopters. Uh, I can't look for it uh, specifically, except, uh, except if there is no more uh, other changes in the front or back elevations. Okay, I understand from you that you uh, rely more on the clinical, yes. meaning the refraction and yes. the best corrected visual acuity. Yes. And, but if you don't depend on the, 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 the differences in the Ks and in the K2 or the K max or the KM, you don't uh, put a lot of weight on that. It's in, not, other, in, uh, in other words, if, if I found changes in the K readings, but with stable refraction, with stable best correct visual equity, I don't rely upon. So uh, there is no, because you know, I, I face some of my younger colleagues who come to ask me, uh, when should I do another cross-linking, another cross-linking for the patient? The, the, the patient is deteriorating, the, K, the Ks are increasing. And then I ask him them this question, what about the refraction and the vision? Uh, you know, the patient is happy. The patient is happy and doesn't feel any yeah. problem. So yeah. uh, I tell them, uh, don't care. Uh, just follow the, the pentacam for more time. Am I doing that right? Do you do the same? I, I don't know. I do the uh, same. I do the same. Because- So uh, you, do, you, you don't recommend doing pentacam in every visit? No, no, no. If the vision uh, is happy, if the so so the question if the refraction is the same and best corrected vision is the same you will not no. ask for pentacam no i ask for pentacam on 6 months regular basis every 6 months routine it is routine, routine. okay yeah. okay so that i don't miss anything okay dr mazi till till she reach 40 or he reaches 40 she will never reach 40 Ah, uh, yes, sure. <laughs> he will reach 40. No. Yeah. Sure, he, will he, will, reach 40. He, will, he will reach 40, yes. yes. Why do you say she? You, you have, all your patients are uh, females? Mo most of them. I have a lot of female patients. <laughs> Do, Dr. Mazin, you agree with Dr. Muhammad Katim in this point of evaluation for progression <laughs> of keratoconus, whether after cross-linking or without cross-linking? Okay, thank you. Uh, now, let me comment um, point by point. Um, the shape of the topography in this case seems to be uh, like an early, very early case of pellucid marginal degeneration. It seems to be. Okay, I'm not sure of, of this. Why? Because let's assume that this patient did not do cross-linking. We have to follow up. From where I get I got this uh, impression, because if you look at the uh, shape of the pachymetry map in the right eye, in the right eye, you will find it as a pyramid, okay? And even yes, as you see, it is like a pyramid, pyramid of Khofu maybe or Khafra maybe. <laughs> so yeah, so it depends. If it is Khofu, then we have different plan of treatment. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, it's a joke. <laughs> okay, so as you see, it is a pyramid. So maybe now this is what I call the droplet sign. The droplet sign is a very early sign of pellucid marginal degeneration. Now it is uh, to some extent or less extent in the left eye. Okay, you you can find in the left eye a pyramid, but it is smaller. However, if I face such a patient. Uh, with an age, what, what's the age of the patient, please? Again. 20s, uh, 20s, 22, 20s. Uh, 20, 22. 32. 32. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. No, this is um, not the patient, uh, Dr. Ala. No, this, this, this the is not the case, sure. Dr. Ala. This is not the case. This is not the case. It is this the case. This is plus this the astigmatism that you show. Yes. Okay. This is Dr. Mazin This is the most probable okay. Yes. It's not as you see. 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 It's
uh, and uh, she has this shape. So I would uh, 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 monitor the progression every three months rather than every six months. Okay. Now what I look for the progression, what I look for, I'm talking about not cross-linked. Okay. Because after cross-linking something different. Now this one, for example, is not cross-linked every three months. Now I look at the ABCD Bellin staging, keratoconus staging. It is a system uh, or a software within the Pentacam, which classifies the stage of keratoconus in every visit. And it gives uh, very nice clues actually, uh, because it depends on zones rather than single points. Mm -hmm. So it is very good. Um, I think this is the best until now to follow for uh, progression. Uh, there is a special way of reading this ABCD, okay? We are not going to talk about it. It will take a lot of time. Now, for example, if I don't have the ABCD and I have just these two maps, I depend on two parameters or two points, the K max and the thinnest location. Now, based on some studies, um, there is a noise for every machine. There is a noise, which is uh, the plus minus standard deviation of reading errors. This noise of the machine increases when the uh, pentacam, um, or sorry, when the, uh, the cornea is uh, more distorted. Uh, what is the meaning of noise? It means that if I take a measurement of a patient now and after five minutes, and after five minutes, for example, in the same session, then I will find that the K-max might be 44 now, 44.2, 44.3, okay, in the same session. So these variations, fractions, are known as noise. Now this noise becomes wider when the, the cornea becomes more distorted, such as in keratoconus. Now, according to one uh, of the studies, it showed that the noise may go up to 1.5 diopters, okay, 1.5. This is why I consider the change of more than 1.5, uh, I mean two diopters and above, I consider it significant between the visits. So if I find only one diopter change in Kmax, I don't consider it as a change it, it, because it is within the noise. Now we Kmax or Km? K max, K max, K max, K max. K max. Okay. okay. Now we come to the thinnest location. The thinnest location, the same, it has a noise up to 12 microns. This is why I consider 15 microns and above thinning, I consider it as a significant change. Now, if I find the change in both of them, thinnest location, thinning more than 15 microns or 15 microns and above, K max change two diopters and above. If they are together, then I say there is a progression. But if only one of them, I consider that as an artifact. Okay. However, this is not a very sensitive and specific way because we depend on points, only points. And these points are prone to artifacts, dryness and other things. So the best way is A, B, C, D. Of course, the A, B, C, D, it includes within it the visual function. So visual function, as uh, uh, Dr. Mohammed Al-Katib said, is a very important factor. Although some of the studies, like uh, John Canalpolis, he made uh, a study and he found that visual acuity is not considered as an indicator of progression because some cases progressed while the visual acuity stayed normal, okay? So in general, in general, it is not a single point. It is a collection of data. We have to depend on visual function. We have to depend on K-max and thinnest location. Now, if the patient had cross-linking, uh, this is a very good message for the audience, especially for young ophthalmologists. The question is when we can uh, decide whether this cross-linking has failed or it, it gave its, uh, uh, the, uh, achieved its goal, all right? We cannot 
judge within the first six months after cross-linking. We cannot. We have to leave the patient six months, and after six months, we start monitoring the cornea. Why is that? Because the K readings during the first six months, they go up and then down. And corneal thickness during the first six months, it goes down and then up. So as we see that, the cross-linking will cause changes in the cornea, which are very similar to progression, steepening and thinning. So during the first six months, the changes induced by the cross-linking are very similar to progression. So we cannot, we cannot say that this is progression. We have to finish the six months, then we start, okay, we start monitoring progression or failure of the cross-linking. Uh, I actually, I agree with Dr. Mazin in last point. This is very important. And it's a very important message for the audience because after you are doing cross-linking, don't do immediately uh, pentacams on monthly basis or two monthly basis. You have to, yeah. to wait till at least six months. Then you do your first post-operative pentacam. I, I do this in my practice, actually. Yeah. Okay, you recommend yes. doing after first six months and follow up then every six months or every year. Yeah, yeah. You recommend also doing a pentacam after each pregnancy? Within the pregnancy, you mean? After, after pregnancy, after delivery. Uh, I, I do, I do yeah. pentacam during pregnancy even if the patient has keratoconus or even was cross-linked before uh, she, pregnancy. If she is cross-linked and doing well for one or two yeah. years, and now she got married yeah. and pregnant. Yeah, yes. You do, every you do pentacam months. and every, every three, three months, months during pregnancy. Yes, yes. So and if, if there is a progression, if she mm. progressed and the pregnant, you will do cross-linking during pregnancy? This is a very big question and no answer till now. And nobody dares to answer. Why? Because we cannot say that it is safe, although it is safe, but medical legal, if anything happens, then you will, you will be, be put, accused. Yes, that because of cross-linking, this, this happened. Although it is not there, there, there is no correlation. But of course, you have to wait until they understand that there is no correlation. Okay, so um, medical legally, you, you don't you have wait a until what? You don't have. Sorry, sorry. I, I didn't hear. You wait until uh, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, you will you. wait until they understand. I mean, the <laughs> lawyer, the community, uh, the authorities. The, yes. <laughs> yeah, I actually they understand. Yeah, I actually have um, a patient like what you are saying, Dr. Hatem. She was a doctor and uh, she was a keratoconus, and the keratoconus was not progressive for at least six years. And then uh, she disappeared, and then she returned back after one, one and a half years and told me that there is a change in my vision. And when I asked her, I know I, I knew that she was pregnant in this period. So uh, it happens, of course, that the pregnancy can, uh, can turn the form thrust or the stabilized keratoconus to a more progressive part. Yeah, it's dangerous. But at the same time, when she came to me, she was pregnant and her husband was a doctor, and he has the two opposite opinions, like Dr. Mazin said. Some people told him that uh, cross-linking is safe and no problem. Others said there is no guarantee or there is no warranty that nothing will happen for the kid. So, and uh, we decided not to do anything except after uh, uh, childbirth. And we postponed everything. And nothing happened. Nothing more added to the progression of the keratoconus during this period. Okay, one as more if question. it happens, as uh, if it happens in the uh, in the beginning of the pregnancy and then it, uh, it stops, it reaches the maximum it stops. Doctor Ala, please. I find yeah. it is about twelve, more than twelve uh, with Doctor Mazin, yeah. and he is having midnight tomorrow. Midnight. Oh, so uh, uh, I promised him not more than two hours. So. <laughs> so I want to learn more and more, but I I, I, I gave him the promise. So, okay. so he, he starts to sleep okay. with us now. So I, uh, after your permission, Dr. Ala, we can finish it now? 
Of course, I was going to present your case, but uh, no problem it's about my you. case. No problem. It's up no, to no, you. No, 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 no. no problem. <laughs> but actually, the, the 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 discussion was very very fruitful. I I learned a lot, and actually, and uh, I thank you very much all for this contribution. And uh, maybe we'll make another meeting in the near future, inshallah. Uh, yes. uh, why not to to do another one? for more discussion because actually a lot of things to be said about lens-based refractive surgery, a lot of things to be said about yes. keratoconus management. Um, still, we have a lot of things to, to say about uh, selection criteria for refractive surgery. So, yeah. We can do an, an, an episode, episode two of uh, Pentacam decision-making, no problem. I don't think uh, Dr. Hatem will mind or Dr. Ket. Oh. No, no, it's uh, a great uh, honor no, for no. me to oh, meet you again. For me. I meet, uh, meet Dr. Mazen, of course, it's a great honor. And uh, I really appreciate uh, <laughs> 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 uh, the work that you have done in the world. I'm going to فعلا فعلا شكرا دكتور مازن على قبول الدعوه شكرا انك كنت موجود انا فعلا بحب اسمعك واستفيد منك وبستفيد كثير من الدكتور محمد الكاتب وعمنا الكبير الدكتور علاء غيث طبعا وسياده العميد انا عارف هو موجود معانا بس الظروف غصب عنه مش موجود دكتور احمد غنيم وهو بيعتذر كان الله في كان الله في عونه والله ففعلا اول ثانكس تو اول اوف يو اول ثانكس تو بي ال ايفنتس فور هير اتس اورجنايزيشن تو نوفارتس فور اتس سبونسر شيب And for Professor Ala Aghis for uh, his foundation of the Owl Eye Lounge. Thank, thank you. you. Shukran, shukran. Shukran, Gazilan. Shukran, Gazilan. Shukran, Good night, Dr. Mazir. Don't forget to talk about the last 10 minutes. Sorry. Good night. Shukran, shukran. Thank you.